And Hollywood booted me out, um, you know, a good 10, 11 years ago because they don't they don't like the fact I'm a Christian and a conservative because that's apparently um, that makes me a double leper in Hollywood. You mentioned staying busy and you said you had 80 movie credits of acting on your IMDb. Yeah, I was there last night and you're nearing 200 credits between acting, producing, directing and things like that. Yeah, no. And what strikes me is, Kevin, you're always working. And so I wanted to talk about work with you a little bit because you're a guy who probably doesn't have to work as hard as you do, but it's very clear you're, you're driven and you're purposeful in that. So what's your philosophy on work and how do you kind of balance that with family? Well, I mean, I still, I, I, I love the business. I mean, I still am passionate about it now as I was when I was 20 years old. So um, I love being on the set. I love the creativity of it all. I mean, Hollywood booted me out. Um, you know, a good 10, 11 years ago, because they don't, uh -huh. they don't like the fact I'm a Christian and a conservative, because that's apparently, um, that makes me a double leper in Hollywood. And, uh, you know, you got to laugh at their hypocrisy because they scream for tolerance and freedom of speech, but it's all a one-way street with these guys. They're, you know, Hollywood is as bad as Washington, D.C. They're all, they're right. just, there's a lot of evil there. There's a lot of hate, there's a lot of anger and divisiveness. And uh, what a horrible way to go through life. But I, you know, we formed Sorbo Studios and we're doing, Movies that have that Hollywood used to do. Movies that have hope and love and laughter and and redemption, you know, and um, wonderful movies that have a positive message instead of a negative one. And so we're going to keep on doing that. I love staying busy. Um, I don't know. Uh, it was just uh, 2010. I think was a big turnaround year for me in terms of the movies I wanted to keep doing. I did a movie called What If, and in my 87 plus movies, What If's in my top three. And a lot okay. of people don't know about it, which is unfortunate because that's the independent world. How do you get these movies out there right. without a big advertising budget? Uh, well, What If was uh, written by um, the same guys that did my movie God's Not Dead, which was a really huge hit. Uh, in, in my book, What If is a better movie? Mm. So um, I just kept, um, D Dallas Jenkins directed it. His father, Jerry Jenkins, uh, funded it. Um, like I said, the same writers that did God's Not Dead did What If. Uh, uh -huh. I think their most recent one was Nefarious, and they did Unplanned before that. But, um, you know, I get a call. I did a, What's interesting with Full Circle thing with Dallas is that he directs me in that movie. It's my first really sort of faith-based movie, and I said, I want to do more movies like this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be faith-based, but I, I want family-friendly movies that have a positive message. And say, You know, the old Cary Grant, Jimmy Stewart movies, things like that that had good messages in them and good family movies. Um but uh, I get a call from Jerry Jenkins because I directed the most recent Left Behind based off his book. And right. Jerry said, this is easily the best rendition of my book uh, ever ever done on a movie. I could take that as a better compliment from anybody. You know, I, I knew Tim LaHaye, his writing partner, but he passed years ago. So right. um, it was good to be part of this. It was a lot of fun to be part of such a great movie. Nice. Yeah, I got to see uh, Miracle in East Texas yep. before it came out. And Man, I, I really enjoyed that. It was nice to be able to sit down with my family in the living sure. room and watch a film together. So thank you. Um, well, see, that's another thing. Great movie. Great script. Uh, I was blessed to direct that one as well. Sam's in it. She does great. There's a great courtroom scene where she steals a movie in. And uh, it was, you know, here's this movie. It's a true story set in 1930, written by an Oscar-nominated writer, Dan Gordon. Dan mm -hmm. Gordon wrote The Hurricane, Denzel Washington, White Herb, Kevin Costner. Great writer. And uh, we don't have the big money to get promotions, uh, you know, to get it out to, to, you know, we can't do, it was a $2 million movie. Uh -huh. <laughs> we don't, you can't have a hundred million dollar advertising budget like they do for, uh, you know, Avatar and Avengers and Spider-Man movies. So uh, we got to rely on word of mouth. And it's frustrating that that movie is such a good movie. And uh, we're, you know, hopefully people watch this now, we'll go check it out. I think it's streaming somewhere or they can get a copy from us at Sorbo Studios. Um, it's a wonderful PG rated family movie. True story. Yeah. Yeah. It, it strikes me. You, you mentioned a little bit kind of being blacklisted in Hollywood <laughs> and yet you've still been able to work and do for stuff. Being a patriot. I got, I got blacklisted for being a <laughs> patriot, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. A, a super spreader of truth as my, my um, t-shirt reads. Oh, they yeah. hate that. They hate the truth. Bob bothers yeah. them. Yeah. And yet, you know, you're still able to work. You're still able to stay, stay busy, feed your family and all that. And you can still do stuff you're proud of. And I think it's it's important. I, I worked in a similar place. I was not acting, but I was working in the industry. And ever since leaving, 
it's it's amazing to see the freedom you receive and still the ability to work and do stuff that you really care about. This episode of Rapid Response was brought to you by CTC Math. Visit them at ctcmath.com today.